if I've learned one thing through the years, it's that all successful landscape photos have three things in common. A compelling subject, an ideal composition, and good light. This recipe seems simple enough, but the order in which we find these three elements has an enormous impact. It's the difference between chasing the light and waiting patiently for just the right conditions. My visit to Death Valley last year coincided with a large winter storm. I arrived as the first drops of rain began to fall. It seemed like I was always chasing the light. I felt incredibly rushed. I questioned every exposure and every decision that I made. It was a frustrating trip, but I followed my instinct and managed to capture some images that I'm very proud of. There are, of course, many other factors in landscape photography, some of which we can't see, the most significant of which is time. It takes time to find interesting subjects, to wait for ideal light, and to enjoy the experience. This too is something my previous trip lacked. As a storm swept through, I didn't have time to scout for new and different subjects, so I had to stick to what was mostly familiar. When going on these trips, I try to strike a balance between photographing familiar subjects and exploring new areas that are off the beaten path. My goal for this trip is to make up for last year and spend several days exploring new locations. This helps to fuel my creative process and satisfy my own sense of curiosity about the world around me. It's important to stay flexible and to work with the conditions you are given. The weather over the next few days will be significantly different from last year. I expect mostly blue skies, but with strong gusts of wind. It's very difficult to use a large format camera in these conditions, but for every gust of wind, there's a moment of calm. You have to work hard to put yourself in the right place at the right time, and creativity goes a long way. Another factor for this year's trip is the ongoing government shutdown. Though the vast majority of the park is open, some roads and facilities are closed. My plan is to start in the more remote areas of the park, then work my way towards Furnace Creek. This is a story of my January of 2019 visit to Death Valley National Park. So I have pulled off the main highway, and now it's time to air down the tires. It's pretty windy right now. It's actually a little on the cold side. Hopefully it'll warm up a little bit as the day goes on. Uh, but I need to air down my tires down about 15 or 20 PSI. I have some automatic deflators I use for doing that, which makes it go by a lot faster. But airing down the tires helps to avoid any punctures from sharp rocks, helps you float on the sand a little bit, also just kind of smooths out the ride, which is kind of nice. But I'm gonna be heading to some sand dunes today, and the uh, first time I visited those dunes is back in 2017. And I really don't know what to expect as far as the light there. Um, but I'll spend the day kind of wandering around and see what I can find. But now it's time to get those tires aired down and uh, get on my way. This dirt road back behind me, so. Let's get the tires aired down.
camp set up, had myself some lunch, and uh, got my backpack set up you see over my shoulder there. I have it loaded up with my 8x10, handful of lenses, some film holders, and this is gonna be kind of a tricky situation. Basically, the dunes are back over there. They're kind of up against a mountain there, and it's not really gonna be great for you know, first light in the morning. It's not really gonna be great for sunset, but I'm thinking maybe if I can find a strong composition and maybe have some clouds in the sky or maybe a, like a blue hour shot or something along those lines. But this is a set of dunes I first visited back in 2017. And that was the year that my 8x10 was toppled off the dune ridge because there's some pretty high wind. And then while I was recovering it, one of my video cameras was destroyed by blown sand. So. I don't exactly have a good track record here, but uh, I figured I'd give it a second shot just to see if I can come up with something. Uh, but if I can't, then I'll head on to some other areas. But I got everything ready to go, so let's head out to the dunes and see what I can find. So I've taken a couple hours or so to just kind of wander among the dunes here. And I've been coming to Death Valley for about 10 years now. And in all those times and all those visits and the many different dunes I've visited, I only really have one dune photo that I really like. It's sort of the classic, you know, camera placed on the, you know, the uh, leading edge of a dune. You know, a little bit of side light right at sunset, some clouds in the sky. It was, it was a photo that turned out really nice, but I've always found the dunes just to be so hard to photograph. So these dunes here are a little bit different. You have these... Uh, these dunes are kind of smaller, but they're pushed up against the mountains here. And the mountains, these rock outcroppings are really dark and they have a really nice texture to them. They have a nice triangular shape. And one of the things that, you know, going to these dunes, sort of the first instinct is to start, you know, hiking up those dune ridges and see if you can find some nice composition. But in this area, it's kind of nice because you have this variety of different textures in the foreground. You got these little bushes here. Uh, there's some rocks. Uh, kind of laid out in kind of patterns and then that kind of low sweeping dune kind of forms a nice leading line and then you have all those nice you know outcroppings of rock in the background the only challenging thing is that the light here is going to be really hard to work with because the sun is going to set back behind the mountain over my shoulder there and it's going to rise back behind that mountain back there so i'm not going to get those sort of first or last rays of sunlight so what I'm thinking is maybe find a nice composition, uh, leave my camera here overnight, though I do have a way of securing it, um, and try to get kind of a blue hour, kind of a twilight morning shot. Uh, that way I can get nice soft light, which could kind of um, pull out some of the subtleties of the dunes, which is kind of nice. But I'm gonna see if I can get my camera set up and see if I can find a composition. So I've got my camera set up. I went with a horizontal composition using my 240 millimeter lens, which is kind of equivalent to a, about a 35 millimeter on a full frame. And I'm shooting the scene back over my shoulder there. So some of those bushes there are gonna be in the foreground. Um, so the dunes there are gonna be in the background then way up high, you see the mountain there. And this is gonna be a morning shot. It's gonna be a photo that will hopefully make use of kind of blue hour sort of light, which is kind of a nice, calm, kind of warm yet cool kind of a light because I'm not gonna be getting any, at least I don't think I'm gonna be getting any nice kind of direct warm light on these mountains uh, first thing in the morning. I do have my camera locked down pretty tight here. It's this big, huge orange sand screw that goes about a foot deep down in there. Uh, some really strong cord and then this kind of this metal um, kind of acts like a ratchet in a way, kind of uh, holds that cord nice and tight. So I'm going to leave my camera here overnight and hopefully end up with a decent shot in the morning. But uh, now I think I'm going to put on my much lighter backpack 
because <laughs> now that I'm not gonna have my camera in there and then uh, just kind of take a tour of the place and see if I can find some interesting stuff maybe to shoot tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening if the uh, conditions are similar. There's a little bit of clouds right now but these are the sort of clouds that will build in a little bit and then they kind of disappear as you get towards sunset so I don't think they're going to amount to much. But let's go have a wander through the dunes. along the edge of the dunes, kind of in the flat areas. Um, but now I'm starting to climb up to the dune ridge. And this is the dune ridge where my uh, eight by 10 got blown over. And uh, thankfully it tumbled down a, a pretty soft slope of sand and it, it really wasn't damaged. Um, but it was a little later in that trip in 2017 that it was heavily damaged. And I say this knowing full well that my Arca Swiss is out there alone, so. Hopefully, history does not repeat itself. But this back up here, that's the dune ridge I'm gonna climb up to. And I'm going to see how it looks kind of in the uh, late afternoon into the evening and kind of get some ideas as far as like subjects and compositions. That's a lot of what I do, just kind of get out there, try to see the light and try to come up with a plan of some way to capture it. the second of these mylar balloons I've picked up today. They travel a really, really long way, so don't release these. So I've been making my way along this really windy dune ridge, and I've been trying to see if I can find a decent composition for it, and it's proven to be quite a challenge, because there's a, there's a big factor here that um, I think is gonna kind of throw off any sort of composition. So basically we got this nice, sharp dune ridge right here, which looks really good has a bit of a curve to it, so I can kind of walk along this curve and kind of get different backgrounds as I walk along it. But the really tricky part is this area back here, kind of this valley area, because this is a, a big drainage area and it is not level, but it represents a very linear element. So as a result, any sort of composition that has that in it, uh, if the camera is actually level, the photo is gonna feel really very unlevel, very uneven. Um, if I were to level that, um, it could work, but if there's any clouds in the sky, then the clouds are going to be sloping at a weird angle. So I was hoping I'd be able to come up with something, but it's a beautiful scene. It's just a really tricky scene. So I'll keep wandering around, see what else I can find. But the uh, sun's starting to get a little lower in the sky here. But the other thing, too, is, is where I'm at right now, there's no one else here. I mean, there's probably no one for... I don't know, five, 10 miles, something like that. So I have a place to myself, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky place to work with. So we'll see if I can come up with anything else, but sure is nice here. been a pretty long crazy day you know, getting here in Death Valley and kind of spent some time scouting around and hopefully the camera setup I have for tomorrow morning will end up being pretty decent and decent light de decent composition but uh, but we'll see on that but I'm gonna be sleeping in the back of my truck here tonight it's kind of arranged stuff there so I can sleep in there it's actually pretty comfortable but I well, thank you everyone for watching and uh, 
We'll see you all in the morning. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints and my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.